Hi, it's Corrine for Wild Orchid Crafts, and today we are making a mini album, a chipboard mini album from start to finish. And this is using the Simple Stories I Am collection. It's a beautiful collection. I'm using both the 6x6 and the Simple Stories Basics that match the paper collection as well. And the inside pages are 6x5 and they, I'm using chipboard for the pages. So this is just a real quick overview of what we'll be making today. I'm starting out with my chipboard and I have two pieces for the front and back cover and a piece for the spine. The two pieces for the front and back are six and a quarter by six and a quarter. The spine is six and a quarter by three. I wanted a larger spine, so I had more room um, for what I had in the front and, and back cover. I'm using a Tim Holtz binder ring, and I'm taking two sheets of black eight and a half by 11 paper and adhering them together. I'm using quarter inch tape, so I'm adding two of them to give myself a half inch to adhere them to, to overlap. And then this will be the cover of my book. So I'm just trying to line those up. And now I'm using a piece of Tyvek. That's that mailing label. If you use those when you ship, you want to save those because those make for great binding. And my piece is six and a quarter by five and a half. And I'm quickly going to speed through any of the parts that I'm taping down because I don't think you need to see that fully. But as you can see, I'm adding tape to the entire back of my spine piece, adding that to the Tyvek, and then I'll add tape to the entire Tyvek piece. You don't maybe have to use this much tape, but I don't want the person that gets this album to ever worry about it coming apart. So I tend to use a lot of tape in my mini albums. So now I'm just eyeballing it. I'm going to center that as best as I can and do the exact same thing with my chipboard. I'm just adding tape around the edges and I will add some wet adhesive in the middle. So now I'm using a little template that I made for myself. You want to keep a little distance between your spine and your front and back cover, at least the distance of two pieces of chipboard. I use two pieces of chipboard plus a, a third piece of a very thin chipboard because I like my spine to be able to move. That way when photos are added, there's plenty of room in the album. So that's my little guide. Again, you can eyeball it. You can use a ruler, whatever you'd like to do. Now I'm just really pressing it down, making sure that that glue is spread out evenly. Now here I have extra room on the sides. Again, you can eyeball it. I'm a little OCD, so I like to line it up and cut it, but you really don't need to do that. And the reason I'm cutting it off is you're just wasting tape. You don't need all of that folded over. Plus it, it'll just be a little bit bulky. Now I'm mitering off the corners. That will help when, and you can see there, there's about an eighth inch left. You don't want to cut right up to the chipboard. And that will help when you fold it to um, eliminate some of the bulk. So now I'm going to just fold up my papers, just get them started, and add tape around the entire outside of all the chipboard and also down the side of the front and back cover and the inside of the spine. Wherever the, the album's going to be folded, I want there to be plenty of tape. So now I'm adding it all the way to the outside of my paper. You can use wet glue for this, but I like how it adheres with the tape. It's very smooth when it's done. So now I press down the long end on both sides and then I do the short ends. And now here, uh, what you wanna do on the corners is a little bit sticking out. You wanna fold over those corners here, which I'll show you. I'll show you the difference once I folded one over and the other one not folded over. And again, that one's folded and that one's not. So that's going to give you just a cleaner look once it's all done. Now, I know I'm quickly going through this tutorial, but I do have on my channel a start to finish mini album, exactly how I'm doing this, a different size. I will link that in the description box if you're interested. I go over it in great detail. Like I said, I know I'm quickly going over this. So if this is a little bit too quick for you, if, if you've never made a mini album before and you want a little bit slower version, more detailed, check the link in the description box below. 
So now I'm cutting down some pieces for the inside of my cover. I'm cutting a spine piece and then the front and back cover. I could have done the same as I did on the outside of my book and made one long piece, but if I do that, the two pieces meet in the middle and I'm putting the um, binder ring in the middle so I didn't want too much bulk there. So again, I'm just adding tape to the back of them. And there's my spine piece. And now I will add the black for the front and back cover. And you don't have to add black if you don't want to. If you wanted to add your pattern paper directly to it, you can. At this point, I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I usually add black and then just decide on my pattern paper later. So now I'm slowly creasing where the folds are. And you want to do this slow and you don't want to press very hard with the bone folder. It may be hard to see on camera, but I was very lightly pressing in those folds just to kind of move it around and, and fold up those front and back cover. So now I'm just kind of centering um, this binder ring. I'm seeing how long it is and I'm marking where I want my holes to go. I'm using my Big Bite Crocodile. These binder rings come, I got them from Hobby Lobby. You can pretty much buy them anywhere, but they come with brads. So I'm going to be adding the brads here. I'm showing you, you don't want to add glue in the middle because that's where your binding rings open and close. So you need that movement in there. So I'm just adding a little bit of E6000 to, to where my brads are going in. So really the only thing that's holding this onto your book are those brads, which they hold great. So I'm just folding those over on the back, opening the brads or the prongs. And now I made myself a little template, a six by six, because originally I wasn't thinking and I cut out my chipboard at six by six. So I'm just basically marking it and eyeballing it, but I am trying to get it in the same place when I mark my holes. I'm trying to measure it up where I move it in, but I just eyeballed as far as how far I wanted the holes to go in. So there's my six by six chipboard and I realize here in just a minute I need to cut them down. But first I'm going to place all my holes in the chipboard using my little template. I really didn't plan too much of this album out. I just knew that I wanted a six by six album. Here's where I show you that I cut them down to six by five. And the reason you need to cut them down is because when it's, you have to allow for that inch that's in the binding so they don't sit outside your book, your covers. Here's the paper collection, absolutely beautiful. I cut all my pieces down to a little bit smaller than six by five, about an eighth inch smaller. And I don't show you all of this on camera because it's very redundant, but I'm adding tape to the back. And I do show you some of um, what I did to other pages. So I add my paper and then I go back and add my hole. And then I'll add my back piece and then go back and punch my hole again. So on this one, I'm going to add a tag to it. So I just use my circle cutter, eyeballed it and took out a, a half circle in the middle. I'm adding my tape to the edges and then I'll add a little bit of wet glue where I won't have my tag. That way it holds it in place. So I'll adhere that and add my holes back in. Now on this piece, I wanted to add a flip over page. So I'm showing here how I did it. I cut the page to the same size as my other page and scored it one inch in. And now I didn't decide on how far I want it to go over. I'm just eyeballing that. I'll mark it where my, with my pencil and I'm going to use a Spellbinders border die to cut a decorative edge. So to do that, I'm giving myself a straight line and show, marking where the center of the page is. That way I can line up my die perfectly. So I'm using a little bit of washi tape to hold that die on there while I run it through my Sizzix. And again, that's going to give me that scallop decorative edge. And I do that also with pattern paper off camera. So now I'm just going to erase my pencil lines. And I do another similar page like this, but I do that off camera. Since I showed you how, how I did this one, I do the exact same thing, except from the top down. This is a side flip. So I'll just use my wet glue and adhere that before adhering my pattern paper. I like to add just the top 
piece of adhesive, get it where I want, and then remove the other three pieces. That way I can pretty much line it up fairly straight every time when I do it that way. So now we have a little flip up on that page to add journaling to. Now after this I decided I wanted to add eyelets to all of them. That way they flip a little bit smoother in the book. So I'm using these large eyelets that I got in the sewing section at Walmart and it comes with this little tool to so it um, you can hammer it and it'll mushroom out the inside of the eyelet. Now here I made a pocket using my Cameo. Here's that side pocket. There's that front and top flip up. I used a coin envelope. I made a little belly band and one more little pocket there. Those are the only things I didn't really show on camera. So now I want to add some glue to adhere down over the, the brads just to make sure that they're adhered down well. I knew I was covering up the spine. On the sides there, I wasn't happy with how it looked, the paper that I used, so I added just strips of paper on either side of the binder ring. This is a frame that I cut out from the Silhouette Cameo, and I'm adhering three pieces together because I want it very sturdy. I'll be adding a fourth piece in a minute. And I did this in another album recently. Um, I decided to make a an accordion under the um, frame, that way you could get a lot more photos than just the one. So I measured my frame and I'm cutting these down to four by four. I'm actually cutting them to four by eight because I want it to be four by four in the end. So those are four by eight and now I'm scoring them at the four inch and I'll be making an accordion file with these. So again on the eight inch side I scored them at four and a half. I'm folding them in half and then I will glue them accordion style. Just making sure I, that it fits behind there perfectly and I was really happy with that. So I'm just going to sandwich them and adhere them down. And I think I did three full sheets of paper so I think I did six of these little four by four. So now I'm going to adhere this behind my frame and I have just a little bit to work with. So I add the glue to the very end of my accordion file. And a little bit of the glue was showing, which I'm not worried about because number one, this glue dries clear and number two, I'll be covering it up anyways. So I'm just wiping off the excess glue and now I'm going to glue down the last frame, but I'm going to leave the top part of the frame open. That way the recipient can add a photo. They can slide a photo right down on it. So I left the top with no glue and added that on. And here's the decoration piece that is going in there. I cut an acetate piece for a template so they can use that to help cut their photo down although it's just a three and three quarter photo. So you need to hold it closed, otherwise it's gonna flap open. So I'm using some seam binding and I'm going to tie a bow. I decided I wanted a little bit lower on the frame. And I left the bow a little bit larger, that way once all the photos are added in there, it has room to grow. And that's why I wanted my spine a little bit larger than what I actually needed because I knew I wanted to put a bulky piece in the front and the back. So this allows for room and also for flowers, the gorgeous Wild Orchid Craft flowers. So I was going to put that in the back. I decided to add it to the front of the album. And now as you can see, there's room for tons of photos in there. So even though this is a tiny album, the person that receives it will get be able to get lots of photos. This is for the back. This is a six and a half by four, and I'm gonna score it at one half and three fourths quarter. And the back piece is three and a quarter by five. And what I'm doing is making a, a little pocket for the back to add another little mini album in, which I'll show you here in just a moment. So I'm scoring it on three sides. And now I'm cutting out those corners all the way up to the second score line. 
That'll alleviate any of the bulk when I fold it. And now I'm making a little pocket that's going to give me a quarter inch gusset to be able to fit tons more photos in it. So I'm going to glue it to the outside because that's you're not going to see that anyways and that way it won't interfere when I put stuff in and out of the pocket. But I didn't want the back to be blank so that's why I'm adding a piece to the back. That way if you see it, it looks like it's completely finished when it's sitting inside the mini album. So I'm just pressing that down with my wet adhesive. And now I'm going to mat a layer on the front. Again, using a lot of tape, I want to make sure that this really holds. And now I'm pressing it down. So this little mini album is a Lori Whitlock file, and I will put a link to her website to this um, cutout. I cut it out from the Cameo. This can be very easily done if you don't own a Cameo. You just kind of want to measure out what size you want and put holes in one side and adhere it together either with ribbon or brads, however you want to do it. I have six pieces, so that allows for 12 more photos just to go in this. So again, this little album um, can fit a lot of photos. And I'm using a little bit more seam binding to tie it together at the top. And it fits perfectly in the pocket. It actually leaves more room. It's pretty big. So once all the photos are added, there's still plenty of room in the pocket or just additional photos can be added in the pocket. So now I'm just cutting out a strip of the paper to add to that pocket. Again, that pocket was cut. All the pockets, um, I actually I think there's only two, were cut from the Cameo. I glued them on and then placed the holes in them. Just adding a decorative piece to that page. That coin envelope I cut from the Cameo as well. That can be for receipts or more photos. This album will hold um, little Instagram photos great. So here's a little tag that I'm placing inside that pocket that we made. And I was going to put like a hole, a fake hole reinforcement, but I decided on a bow. I had a bow sitting there that um, is from another Simple Stories, I believe the Snap Collection, so I added that to the top of the bow. And then that slides right in the pocket there. These are those um, cutouts from the Silhouette Online Store, and it's from the same collection. I love that Simple Stories is putting um, cutouts from all their different paper collections on Silhouette. You just search under uh, Silhouette designs and you can find them. So I'm just adding a few throughout the book. I did, you don't see it in this video, but I did end up adding a few more things to the pockets, some of the cutouts from the paper collection. These are the mounts that were cut from the inside of those frames. They fit perfectly, so I just added some of the pattern paper to them, and they fit perfectly in the little pockets and the belly band. This is another tag from the same I Am collection. I'm adding a little bit of crochet twine to it. And now I'm going to add the front and back cover. Again, just by taking, releasing the top part of the tape and setting it on, you can get it exactly where you want before adhering the entire thing down. It really helps with getting it straight. So now I'm going to be adding some gorgeous Wild Orchid Craft flowers to it. And that's really all that needs explaining. 
I will let you sit back and watch the rest of the process. I hope you do watch the rest of it, and I really appreciate you stopping by. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment, and all the links for these flowers that I'm using will be in the description box below, along with that mini album tutorial and um, Lori Whitlock's cut out for that little mini album. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoy.
Thank you.